welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides me for tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Popper at the request of Patreon subscriber Samael. And this is the return of Self-Assembler Tron. The goal of this deck is, of course, to assemble Urza Tron, which is Urza's Mind, Power Plant, and Tower. Three lands that individually make one mana each, but together make seven. One, two, seven. That's how we count in Tron land. And then you start casting big spells, like Self-Assembler, which is a five mana four four that, when it resolves, tutors your deck for another copy of it. Keep that train rolling. Last time we played this deck, it was mono blue. And it had some trouble with hyper-aggressive strategies. And what's really good against hyper-aggressive strategies is removal. This is now an Is It deck. There are two copies of Fire Ice in the main, two Is It Signets, which also help with the Tron Ramp, because you could play this on two and then have eight mana, and it's colored on three instead of just seven colorless. Pretty exciting. Signets have a long history of being in Tron decks, going back to old extended and standard formats. And we got some sweepers in this deck now in Breath Weapon. And even Gutshot, which is barely a red card, but it is in here and technically has a red border around it. The reason to be a blue Tron deck rather than any of the other colors that Tron could be is Condescend is busted. Counter target spell unless the controller pays X, scry 2. You will frequently have more mana than opponents, making this a hard counter at basically all points in the game with built-in card selection. And then you have a bunch of cool modal options here. Lauren Revealed can be an island early or an ancestral recall late. Mirror Shell Crab can be a counter spell or a stifle early or just a 5-7 ward later. Sword Coast Serpent. For those of you who missed the last one, I couldn't remember at any point in the video with the creature types of this card were, so I just kept calling it the Whale Snake, and I'm probably going to keep doing that because I enjoy it. But Sword Coast Serpent, it's a bounce spell, then goes on an adventure, and then it's a 6-6. Six -six. This is everything we want in the world, just interaction early and then a threat late. I did enjoy playing this deck last time. I like the play patterns of Blue Tron. I like control decks. I like grinding. I like having endgame engines that just draw a million cards and do a bunch of cool stuff. Let's get into it. This is... Now is it Assembler Tron? Win your spot in the World Series of Poker main event in Las Vegas. Club GG is providing 100 exclusive packages between April 1st and June 30th for those who want to test their skills against the best. Each package includes the $10,000 main event entry fee plus $2,000 for travel. Use code BOSCH for a free 7-day premium membership that includes entry to these satellite tournaments. I'm on the draw in round 1. I am going to keep this hand. I have a circuitous route to Tron. I have an Urza's Tower. I can cycle Lorien Revealed. And I have two Expedition maps. We'll get there eventually, if we're not dead. Opponent has Malta 5. Complete a Silver Bluff Bridge. Is it Signet? That makes me want to cycle on turn 1 rather than play Expedition map. Now I just have a really good thing to do with 2 mana. Augur of Bolas. Trying to recoup that Malta 5. Let's see if it hits. It frequently misses. Got a Scred. That card's not very good against my deck overall. Cycling Lorien Revealed. I can't afford to get the Molten Tributary here. Another Lorien Revealed. Is it Signet? Get it in. Unfortunately, this is a Signet, which requires you to have one mana available to filter into the Signet. It's not a Talisman. Those are uncommons. Talisman of Is It could have cast Expedition Map there, but. Not a card that's available in the format, unfortunately. Uh, I hate jamming into Spell Stutter Sprite with this very important card. So what I'm going to do is cycle Lorien Revealed first. Wait, do I have to do that? No, I can see if this resolves first. And then do something with Lorien Revealed. Okay, we're just in there. In that case, I'm going to activate this and tutor another Tron land. I'm going to Power Plant, make my land drop for turn, and play another map. Okay, they had counter spell they were trying to hold on to. Still effective at stopping me from getting Tron, for now. But I did sneak that first map through. Preordain. Top bottom, the Preordain. Lorien Revealed, I assume, is the card they had. 
Oh, we're a Jeskai deck. Fun. Okay, coast is clear right now to do something big. I did draw the land, which means I can slam Lorien Revealed. Just getting back up to seven cards on an empty board like this, or relatively clear board, feels good. Worth the investment. And this is a cool thing about Bluetron compared to the modern green builds that don't really do things if they don't have Tron. I'm just hitting my land drops here. I just drew three cards. I'm still ramped in the form of Is It Signet, and I'm still playing Magic. And then if I just happen to spike a mine at some point, <laughs> like now, I have Tron. And I have to decide what I'm going to do with this Tron. I don't have to play this. Okay, five, six, seven. I am going to play it, though. Okay, three, four, five, six, seven. I have ten mana here, which is enough to play Mirror Shell Crab and protect it with the other Mirror Shell Crab. Yeah, I'm just going to play this gigantic thing, and if they try to counter it, I can channel the other one, or I can just enjoy my gigantic ward creature. Scred costs four mana to target this thing and also doesn't even come close to killing it. The best of all worlds. And the cool thing about ward is that it's a trigger. I can trigger ward, make them pay for whatever their removal spell is, then after they've paid, make them pay another three by channeling the other one. Cleansing Wildfire, targeting my tower. Do I care about this? I can float two now. I'm going to let this happen. If they're going to cast a spell, they should change phases before they do it. Burn off this mana. I'm going to cast Brainstorm now because they're planning to change phases anyway. Haunted Fengraf doesn't currently hit anything. It returns a creature from your graveyard to your hand at random. I'm going to put back the Fengraf and the tributary in that order. There's no point in just launching the fire. Okay, I no longer have Tron. It's mostly fine. I can play this candy trail, Scry 2, decide if I want Haunted Fengraf or not, <laughs> or just find a tower immediately, lol. I put Fengraf on the bottom, leave tower on top, play tributary and bash for five. This is the plan. I got a bunch of interaction up. I'm pushing damage. I'm reassembling Tron with my next top deck. I could even pop the trail and draw the Tron if they had some sort of forced shuffle or mill effect. Brainstorm, not fighting over that. Condescend plus Ward 3 is a combo. Everything I said about Mirror Shell Crab is even funnier with Condescend if they tap out to deal with this crab somehow and then I get to Condescend for one. Archaeomancer gets back cleansing wildfire or whatever i'll just condescend this i think or should i grab it i'm gonna condescend it no i am gonna grab it because condescend is a hard counter or relatively hard counter that works next turn and every subsequent turn where the crab might not if they cast a one drop the crab doesn't actually counter it and i am gonna eat my candy trail here pick up the tower Find another candy trail. Does that matter? I'm just going to attack first, see what happens. They're in chump block mode. Good call. Urza's tower. Ain't I a stinker? And I am going to play the candy trail. Repeal and brainstorm. Repeal, not very good in this matchup. Brainstorm, I'm usually pretty happy to have around. There's just not many things I want to bounce in this matchup. Hey, they're just passing the turn back. I'm going to Candy Trail. Just keep slamming Tron lands into play. Back for five. One, two, three, four, five. Scred still doesn't kill this thing. Destroy evil. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Okay, I can bounce my own creature. Yeah, that actually sounds better than any of my other options here. Bounce Mirror Shell Crab. Destroy evil fizzles. And then I could replay. The Whale Snake with Mirror Shell Crab now in my hand as a counterspell. This thing is much more susceptible to Scred, but it is still a 6-6, six, six, and Scred's only good for 5 right now. They're down to 3 cards in their hand. Scred. Wait. Oh, they played a land. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. I miss them playing a land. Not that it matters. That was still a good exchange. 2 for 1. Like I said, keep slamming Tron lands. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
And this is the Tron endgame where Condescend is 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10 mana. Archaeomancer, this card's pretty good. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Condescend. And I'm going to leave one floating in case they have a soft counter. They got one card left in their hand. And they've had quite enough. I mean, they did multi five and we assembled Tron twice, but I mean, that's what we're here for. I called out Repeal as a card that's not very good in the matchup. Boulder Branch Golem is good against Burn and not that good elsewhere. I like Hydro Blast in this matchup. We saw the Cleansing Wildfire as part of their plan. Exclude, they're going to have some cool creatures. They do loop their graveyard as well. I like Relic of Progenitus. And then Ulamog's Crusher is something that Samael and I talked about. Just This might seem like a weird card to have in the sideboard, but there are matchups where just jamming a big O and getting to work is one of the best things you can do. And I believe we are in one of those matchups now. The question is, do I think that Whale Snake, the Bounce Effect, or Mirror Shell Crab is worse than that? And heck yeah, I do. Let's go. Keep my hand. I've got Urza's Tower for Expedition Map. I can hold up Condescend next turn. Might as well get my map in here. If they shatter it or whatever, it's not a huge deal. Augur Bolas. Revealing Brainstorm. Pretty good hit. And I'm just going to pass. I have Condescend if they tap out for some nonsense. And I have Pop Expedition Map if they don't. And hopefully we'll see the Condescend bridge me into Exclude. And we're really cooking. Okay, I'm mapping. And I just kind of have to pick a Tron land at random here. Among ones that I haven't drawn already. <laughs> I always pick right. Look at that shit. Just draw the mine immediately. There is some argument to not popping the map until you have the third or the second Tron land, and then this becomes, rather than a coin flip, it becomes just Demonic Tutor. But I kind of like spending my mana there and hitting my land drops, even if I didn't randomly spike the nuts. They brainstormed into Lorien Revealed. Lorien Revealed found Volatile Fjord, which turns on red mana, which also turns on the Hydro Blast in my hand. And I will point exclude at basically anything here. If they play an Augur Bolas, I'm excluding it. Just an insane two for one. Top bottom, they're preordained and did not play a card. Okay, hers is mine. Here I am being a stinker again. I'm going to play Candy Trail off of Tower with the intention of immediately popping the trail with my floating mana. I don't need another power plant. I will take another Hydro Blast. Next turn, I have double blue up and then I have a bunch of interaction. Spire Bluff or Silver Bluff Bridge. Again, in for one, which brings me back to my starting life total. Thanks, Candy Trail. And they just passed. I would rather get more blue up here than add to the Tron. Okay, now I am looking for a way to stabilize the board. I have 20 life to work with, but they are on board and I'm not, which is my next problem to solve here. Augur of Bolas. I am going to exclude this. Just keep the party running here. Not everything they cast is going to be a creature. And just getting that while I can feels right. Okay, another tower. Got three of those now. Impulse can dig. Cycling Lorien revealed when they are actually at the necessary mana to cast it. Means they're more interested in a guaranteed land drop than the potential of Ancestral Recall. And in for one, this Augur's done a lot of damage. End step, I'm going to Impulse. Digging for some action here. Crab Lorien Relic. Relic's interesting. That shuts off a portion of their deck that I am otherwise kind of worried about. Crab's a threat. I don't have a lot of hopes for Lorien Reveal to resolve here. I'm just going to take the, the Relic. B-Storm, that's a good one. I'm going to hold on to that Brainstorm for later. And I'm going to play Relic of Progenitus right now. Poke their Graveyard. This might seem low impact now, but this matters a lot in their end game. They're going to try to loop Archaeomancer, and this is just not going to let them do that. We saw me in game one counter multiple Archaeomancers, and being able to ignore it is so much better than that. Kanko Artificer. 
Put three plus one counters on target non-creature artifact. That's going to be Silver Bluff Bridge. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to try to condescend this. Make you pay four for this creature. This does give them an indestructible flyer. Is the problem. I don't have a good answer to that right now. Pyroblast. Counter target spell if it's red. This is part of why we bring in Hydros, because they're going to have Pyros. And they've got a counter spell. Okay. They are going to end up with the creature, but it can't attack this turn. I could bust my Relic of Progenitus now and draw a card, which does clear a bunch of stuff out of the graveyard. I'm not really excited about this because they could just refill the graveyard, but I would like to find some action. They just went from an 18 turn clock to a four turn clock. That's a much smaller number. Big Crabbers. Three, four, five, six, seven. Jam the crab. I can at least race here. This doesn't have reach, which means it doesn't actually beat the bridge. The bridge can also hang back as just an indestructible blocker forever. And the Kanku Artificer isn't like until this leaves the battlefield or anything. It's just forever. I have a couple bounce spells left in the deck, which is a huge blowout if you ever get to bounce a land. Speaking of huge blowouts, they just want to counter war, so now they're feeling confident to jam all sorts of stuff. Fire Ice. I don't currently have the ability to fire anything. Okay, here is the Whale Snake. This card's actually really good right now. I don't need a tower, and I don't need this Fengraf. So Fengraf picking up Whale Snake might be sick. I can tutor the Fengraf. Yeah, all right. Put back these lands. Expedition map. Use the map. I could also turn on red here. Let's hold up this fire ice for later. Fengraf versus Molten Tributary is the decision here. I'm going to get the Fengraf. And then one, two, three. Hold up. I can attack first and make them commit to blocks before I show them they don't have their indestructible creature anymore. Blocking with Augur, do they have the Ephemerate? They do. Okay, I could Whale Snake the Augur now, which fizzles the Ephemerate, which Augur ends up in their hand still, but at least they're not looping Ephemerate on me. All right, Capsizing Wave target the Augur. Ephemerate fizzles. I don't get any damage here, and I'm a blue source short of casting the Whale Snake. They just reached seven snow lands for Scred if they want to start trying to Scred my crab. Augur. We knew about that one. Dispel. Yuck. They should just bash for six here. Yep. It is your job to get this game over with right now. I'm actually going to ice the Glacial Floodplain right now before they before damage because if they're holding on to an ephemerate and they want to flicker their mall drifter or whatever i don't want to take two also okay it just got tapped and i drew another tron land running out of runway here attack with crab they are blocking correctly as their flyers will get me dead in two hits here and i can't actually race that Unless I find another removal spell. A counter target spell if it's red. They can just dispel this. But if I can get the dispel out of their hand. Okay. Didn't fall for it. They realized they didn't need that. Because if they actually do kill my Sword Coast Serpent. And then I Haunted Fengraf it back. And they use their dispel to fight over Scred. Then I could bounce their Spire Bluff or Silver Bluff Bridge. Alright, now we're just dead. Picking up Ephemerate. I'm just f 6 here trying to recoup some clock because this is a weird, grindy, annoying matchup as far as clock goes. And they're definitely going to win. But I can get ahead on one resource here at least. All four power plants accounted for. Blocking with the Kenku. You don't even need to do that, but they did. Making another flyer. Okay, I'm pretty sure Repeal reads non-land permanent which doesn't help with these things. The I did board out a Sword Coast Serpent, which might come back in here. And now we see the Archaeomancer end game where they flicker some value creature, and then on the rebound, they flicker Archaeomancer, which gets back the Ephemerate. And I am up a minute on the clock going into game three. Okay, Sword Coast Serpent. 
pretty good against animating a land. I think that's actually better than Crusher. Crusher can smash through indestructible blockers, though. I could shave off Fire Ice and get Crusher back in with the, the full boat of Whale Snakes. Repeal does say non-land permanent, so that doesn't help. Yeah, I am going to shave Fire Ice because Fire, I did actually draw it in a spot where it would be good, but I didn't have red mana for it. Okay, I'm going to keep this. It has a straight line to Tron and a blue source. Power plant map. A mountain. This main phase cycle Lorien revealed. Probably just play into the clock here so they can get their F6 value. Don't have to hold that up during my turn. Ooh, Signet's really exciting. I'm going to take a turn off mapping here. Love me a Signet. And they're wildfiring my tower. That's fine. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So easy. Easy game. Magic is easy. Okay. Got some hooks in. Getting Tron through. Brainstorm. I'm not going to pop this relic just to draw a card this time. I am going to try to squeeze their end game. Unfortunately, they're representing Pyroblast here, or else this would be a super easy Lorien revealed. If I draw a Hydroblast, no love. Okay. Urza's mine. And I can play and activate map right now if I want to, or I could just play map and let it sit and play. That insulates me versus a land destruction spell. Okay, I'm just going to pass here. Silver Bluff Bridge. I'm going to impulse in this end step. Self Assembler straight to the grip. Let's go. Can't Pyroblast that. And I can tutor for another Tron land if I want to. I don't think I want a Tron land here. 7, 8, 9, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, Tower actually does cast another Self Assembler this turn. And Condescend. Let's go. That was great. Assemble. They can't cast Counterspell here because of their mana. Pyroblast doesn't affect this card. It's going to load up the board with the goods. And I'm holding up a Condescend for one. There we go. And get the last card out of that graveyard. For good measure. I do love how quickly Self Assembler just gives you a handful of cards and a board full of power. Silver Bluff Bridge. Okay, evoking a Drifter is fine, because if they try to ephemerate, I can get them with the Condescend there. And they do get to draw two cards, but they don't get to draw four cards and have a creature in play. Kachow. Condescend this ephemerate. Coolamog's Crusher, let's go. Mine to the bottom, Crusher to the top. This is the card I boarded in for exactly this situation. Okay. I'm going to attack for eight first. Then Power Plant. I have 7, 10, 11, 12 mana here. 13, 14 if I'm willing to fully tap out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. Okay, can I Lorien Revealed? And Crush. Oh yeah, easily. Easily. Okay, I'm going to Lorien Revealed. And then 1, 2. I'd have to kind of overpay here, but it's fine. Doing something messed up. That makes it okay. And I might actually pop the Relic here, because I have the one mana floating and ephemerates the card that I need out of their graveyard. I'm tapped out, but they need to do a lot this turn. I don't care if they make an indestructible blocker here. Scred is not close to killing my Crusher. Scred doesn't kill my Assemblers either, and they're half the size of the Crusher. Top bottom to the Preordain. And then conceded. Okay, nice. Let's go. On to the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. On the play for round two, a double Brainstorm Warrior Revealed Hand. I am actually going to keep this. 
And I'm going to wait until I know what the matchup is before I cast Brainstorm. If I end up getting Spell Pierced. Whatever, they got me. Okay, they didn't get me. Tron Land Expedition map. No problems. Boulder Branch Golem back into the deck. And one of the Whale Snakes back into the deck. Upkeep. Cycle Lorian revealed. I'm going to get Island. And then I'll play Expedition map. And look at that. We kept a one lander, and now we have a grip full of mana, plenty of options. I can use Expedition Map to shuffle Brainstorm. That's kind of busted. Or hold up Counterspell. Not going to fight over a Preordain. A Plains. A Brainstorm. I don't need this Island right away. I love Condescend. I don't need this second Serpent. Second Whale Snake. And I'm just going to RNG pick the Power Plant because I like the art better. Self-assembler. I can drop Signet here, leave up Condescend for two. I kind of want to Condescend something this turn so I can get some card selection. But if they don't play a card, I'm not able to do that. Okay. They tutored for land and then played it right away. I think I just have to pass here. I can't tap out into all that open blue. But my opponent's going to appropriately recognize that I'm a Tron God. I was about to say they're going to appropriately recognize that I'm missing land drops and just play around it. Make me tap out first. But sometimes you just rip the mine. Self-assembler is usually worse with one in your hand already. But if they counter this one, now I'm ready to go. Five mana in the pool. What are we doing with all that? Letting assembler resolve. And then what? Okay, tutoring and assembler. And I'm going to move to combat, see what this man is going to do. That was weird. All right, your turn. I'm not going to play a second one. I've got interaction up now. I'm ahead. The spot they had me in a minute ago, now I have them in, where it's their job to do something. And whoever taps out, whoever blinks, probably loses. In for four. Assembler's on the stack. And I don't actually care if this resolves. I'm not going to fight over it. I guess it depends on how they challenge it. Lose focus. Okay. Well, I guess I've lost my focus. One, two, three, four, five. I'm one mana short of paying for this thing. And I'm going to use this opportunity to get another signet into play. And then I'll just pass. I guess I could have stifled the replicate trigger and then paid. But I don't actually want to fight over that. Okay, this is familiars. So this is a combo deck that's going to try to pop off somehow in the near future. Do I want to whale snake them in the end step? I think I do. Let's try to set back any resource that I can here. Cool. That happened. Whale snake successful. In for four. I've got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven mana. That's enough to mirror shell crab three times and condescend for one. If I play an assembler, I have two, three, four, five, six. That's enough to crab twice. Yeah, I'm going to assemble. Doubling the clock here is actually pretty dope. Oh, remove soul. Look at you. It's a nice little hard counter. Archaeomancer. I can condescend for two and still mirror shell crab. Or I could crab twice. I'm going to try to crab this. Or I could crab once and then condescend for one. And then I got the selection as well. Condescend. I have to remember how Magic Online wants me to tap signets. Hey, condescend that. I could describe to Repeal and Whale Snake. Top top. This is a deck that needs permanence and play to function. There's one of them. Attack for four. They can start undoing this pretty quickly with the God Pharaoh's Faithful. 11 mana. Cost six to crab twice, repeal for x equals one, cost one, that's eight. And then whale snake on top of my deck costs two, that's ten. So I could repeal a two drop, a one or two drop, and still do everything in my hand. Yuck. Okay. Here's this card. What are they getting back with this? Are any of their cards even good? Get back like Lauren revealed, remove soul. I'm going to let this resolve. This might be a mistake because it unlocks Ephemerate from their hand. But I'm not really trying to cast more creatures this game. Okay, I'm just going to go to my turn and attack for four. We're in a little cat and mouse situation now that I might soon fall behind on. They do have the Ephemerate. 
I have the whale snake, which this is not great, but it does fizzle the ephemerate, as we saw last game. Okay, they have three, four, five mana left. Perfect for double crabbing. Okay, three, four, five. I'm gonna crab this again. Leaving up repeal mana. I have to float it now because I don't get to dance around with signets. Like it's kind of use it or lose it. I don't have to cast repeal now, but I can float the mana now. Okay, our Karamancer's in the garbage. Another chancery. I know two of the cards in their hand right now are Remove Soul and Planes. Then Graph. Okay. That has some good hits. Stack with Assembler. And 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I can cast one of these Serpents. Let's get that Remove Soul out of the way. We know it's there, but it's always going to be there. Second Faithful. The Modern Age. Draw a card, discard a card. Okay. Gains a bunch of life. Discarded the planes. Preordained, gaining a bunch of life. This is what I'm actually worried about. This life gain is kind of serious. Bottom, bottom, the preordain. Another preordain. Yeah, every spell they cast is half a turn. They get back on the clock. So I do need to add to this clock. Top, top to preordain this time. Yuck. They start a tapping mana, then change their mind. I'm going to Fengraph in the end step. Just get back one of these things. Ended up with a crab. I drew my last assembler. That sucks. Okay, three, four, five, six, seven. Play the Sword Coast Serpent. And hope I'm not dead. Modern Age Loots. Discarded a uh, land. Sunscape Familiar. This is dangerous. Snap targeting Sword Coast Serpent. Okay. I mean, that's mostly a stall tactic. Is your last card in hand also a banger? Ugh, that's so good. Yeah, that sucks. For me. It's very good for them. And they drew an Archaeomancer. Come on, chill. I dealt with two of those already. All right, well, this is going to be basically impossible to win. Yeah, getting back Ephemerate. Okay, got to figure this out now. Attacking for four is the start. Aldrifter's blocking. Repeal does not do much here. Okay, I'm going to bounce the Mall Drifter, which is not how I want to play Magic, but stopping the Ephemerate loop is essential. Okay, replay the, the Whale Snake. Now I'm just throwing Hail Marys and hoping that something works, basically. Mall Drifter. Remember when they had one card in hand a moment ago without anything really going on? The Lorian revealed. Yeah, now they're cooking. Snap targeting my Whale Snake again. Mortuary Mire, targeting Archaeomancer. Okay, that's on top of their deck now. Ghostly Flicker, targeting two unbeatable cards. Well, I'm going to bounce the Archaeomancer, at least make them pay for this. And then I get to F6 and watch the clock run. Yeah, I wasn't able to apply pressure quick enough, and they threaded the needle. These God Pharaohs, Faithfuls have gained basically a full game's worth of life at this point. They picked Ephemerate back up. They can actually just beat this in combat with a double block. Yeah, they don't care, though. Didn't think they would. I'm going to play the other self-assembler. This just leaves up the most interaction that I can leave up. Another familiar. These soft counters are looking pretty bad. Mole Drifter from hand. Pay the evoke cost, get the full value. They're attacking with their creatures. Archaeomancer. Uh, they have actually tapped low enough for me to grab this. They can just ephemerate the first one and it barely matters. Almost cut up on clock, though. Ash Barons is a land, never a good sign. Deep analysis. Drawn some cards. And they did end up passing the turn. Fire Ice. Uh, that's actually sick, because they're currently tapped out. Fire the Archaeomancer. While they can't flicker it. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whale snake. Attack for eight. Okay. They can flicker their mortuary mires or pick it up with Azorius Chancery. They have plenty of ways to loop their deck back around. This is a marvel of pauper engineering, this deck. 
Seagate Oracle, Preordain. I don't really want to bounce this Vector Glider, but I'm going to. This takes some pressure off with a permanent that I don't carry that much, whether it's in or out of play, and I get to cantrip, and I get F6 value, which is the most important resource right now. I have pulled ahead on the clock. Modern Age, draw then discard, 14 cards left in their deck. Another Modern Age, 13 cards left in the deck. So running out Tron lands here like crazy. Attack with my jerks. There is an Ephemerate in their hand. They can get value blocks here. I'm going to play Urza's Mine and then F6. There are 12 cards left in their deck. After they draw for turn, it's 11. The Modern Ages will bring it to 9. The Seagate Oracle, they did flicker it, so they'll have 8 cards in the deck. They don't seem worried about decking, though. I am dead in 2 hits right now to their board. They got lots of flying. I'm at 6. There's the Mortuary Mire, which gets back an Archaeomancer. And they're snapping my self-assembler, Seagate Oracle. This will get the Archaeomancer. Archaeomancer can get back Ghostly Flicker from the graveyard. And then they are basically going infinite here. Oh, they just got back Remove Soul. Yeah, they know they're winning, as long as they don't lose. I will continue taking game actions that require responses from my opponent. Here comes the Remove Soul. And I will let them go to combat as fast as they can. They're pretty quick about it. Looks like they're going to have 12.59 on their clock to my 14.30 for the next two games. Okay. Ugh. I would have conceded that game a long time ago in paper without the chess clock. We got Relics, Crushers, and Exclude here. My life total doesn't really matter. And Fire Ice did have a cool moment there, but it's pretty low impact. Overall, I just got to get this opponent dead. We saw that game where I got a bunch of good exchanges. I was ahead way before them, got in for like 12 or 16 damage, and then they just turned out and won pretty easily. Got them all again, an actual no lander. I'll keep this one. I'm going to bottom repeal. Let's get this relic in there. Casting a preordain. I don't get a lot of F6 value because I have to be able to relic them. But Relic is also an annoying card on Magic Online because you, as the person getting Relic, have to click on something. All right, Candy Trail. Oh, wow, look at that. Uh, get rid of the Power Plant. Keep the Mine. Familiar. Wish I could have condescended that, but I decided to tap mana instead. Okay, passing the turn. Cycling Lorian revealed. End of turn. Eat the Candy Trail. Cast Brainstorm. Just, there's the tower. Easy game. Island, Exclude, and Relic U. Uh, kind of hate just shoving here. I want to make them act. I have my next two land drops lined up, and just casting Crusher into Remove Soul is so embarrassing. Just making land drops and passing. I will absolutely not bust this Relic just for a card draw ever. Zorko Serpent's nice. This gives me something to interact with. Like, I can boop there. Familiar in the end step. Capsizing wave. Then I can fight this thing on the way back down. And they have to go to clean up. So sick. Just raw card advantage in all its horrific forms. Found an expedition map. I'm just going to cycle for a second tower here. I got a handful of condescends. More mana is not going to hurt. And they are not casting any spells. Mine, mine, mine. Yeah, they're making land drops. If they have to start going to hand size discard, I think this favors me. Godfarer is faithful. This card's annoying. It's not the one that kills me, though. Not actually. I did waste a moment of my life thinking about that, though. I'm going to cycle Lorien Revealed for an island. I probably should have just tapped the power plant and gotten Molten Tributary, but I boarded out my red cards. No, that doesn't matter. All right, I'm fine with that. Okay, exclude this. This is a card I am worried about. Relic this thing. And Impulse. I don't think they have instants I need to worry about here. I'll take a crab. Or is this mine? Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Crusher. Got a bunch of mana up to fight over this. Remove soul. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Condescend for 5. 
Oh, wait, I need more than that. I have to X equals five. I can't just put five mana into it. That's a very different thing. Your shell crab, sword coast serpent, bottom, top. They have another response. Or they're, they have more mana. Exclude. Oh, baby. Trying to send for two. This does tap me out, but this is a powerful spot to be in. Uh, another condescend. Uh, I'm going to top top. All right. Did the tap out kill me? Here we go. They have snaps in their deck and other stuff that can remove a crusher. They could also just do something so insane this turn that it's insurmountable. Let's hope that doesn't happen and I get to just crush. Discarded deep analysis to modern age. Busted. Flashback deep analysis immediately. And they do have the snap. And it looks like they're going to get an Archaeomancer in under my relic. Yeah, Archaeomancer getting back. Exclude or snap? Yeah, snap's better. Okay. Relic you now. Well, you only have one choice. Redeploy the Crusher. And they do have Exclude. I have a Crab. And obviously I know they have Snap, but I'm just trying to ram this thing down their throat until they can't answer it anymore. Sunscape Familiar, hate that, but there it is. Modern Age. Three cards in their hand, one of them snap. Two cards in their hand, one of them snap, plus whatever this preordain comes up with. Top bottom. The snap targeting Crusher. I think that's fine. I'd rather just redeploy it than fight over this. Mole Drifter evoked. Drawing two cards. There's the Ephemerate. Okay. I cannot do anything good here. They have three mana in the pool for deep analysis. I'm not going to counter that, even though I could. Yeah, that's the, the scary thing about this deck. They can just suddenly kill you. Redeploy the Crusher. Poke them with Relic. And pass the turn again. This is probably going to be where I have to pop Relic. And if they have a second Ephemerate, I'm just out of luck. Okay. Pop Relic in response to them targeting their Ephemerate. Okay. Graveyard is actually gone. I think maybe the second time I played Crusher, I wasn't supposed to do that. Snap targeting Crusher. Infinite mana available. Okay. Yeah, none of my soft counters even work here. Another Archaeomancer. With 2, 4, 6, 7, 8 mana. 3, 6, 7, 8. Can't even condescend this. Ironically, the Boulder Branch Golems that I sideboarded out for this Ulamog's Crusher... If they had snapped those this many times, that actually would have been a ton of life that I might be able to time them out with. Not that that's how I want to specifically play to, but it is true. Okay, they're snapping a Drifter in response. This gives them extra mana to pay for the Condescend. I am F6'd at this point. This matchup seems really bad. Okay, Fengraf and Mine. Neither of these are helpful. I still get to Scry, even if they pay. Kind of send powerful magic card. Chancery, pitch up, mortuary, mire. And they didn't have any attacks there. Self assembler, that's annoying for them. Fun for me. Self assembler. Assemble yourself. Do it again. Do it again. Okay, I've had all my assemblers. These are at least multiple creatures for them to interact with rather than being able to just snap the, the crusher over and over. Free and easy like that. I'm going to Sword Coast Serpent, the Vector Glider. This is a bunch of card selection for them, but that's not the axis I'm winning this game on anyway. It does cut their clock in half. Archaeomancer picks up Snap. Snap targeting Self Assembler, Mole Drifter. The Familiar's deck is so cool. I'm usually a deck with Pyroblast in it or removal of some kind which changes how bad your FAMS matchup actually is. Ooh, Brainstorm's really good with Self-Assembler. Put back Assembler, and I think this Crusher is just done being a magic card. Assembler. See this cool trick? Boom. Brainstorm shuffled. Get paid. Attack with my Assemblers. Some of them anyway. Impulse. Finding a Relic here would be pretty cool. Sword Coast Serpent versus Brainstorm. I'll take a Serpent. Drop this last Assembler. And I have a mana. I'll cycle the Lorien. And make my land drop with that. 
In step, they're destroying my evil. Okay. One of the tapped ones. Interesting. They're playing the modern age. I'm going to repeal their other modern age now. Once again, just lowering the power and toughness they have in play. Another modern age. These are the two I bounced. No surprises here. And I'm just going to bounce Mall Drifter right now so I can F6. That's worth a counter spell. Getting in for four. Reordain. Another Mall Drifter. A Expedition map. Play this. Fire it up for the Fengraf. Haunted Fengraf. Play a Serpent from my hand. Or from Adventure, wherever these are coming from. Another one. And they're removing that one, Soul. And I'll activate Fengraf now while I have the mana to do that. Femorating Archaeomancer in response. Sure. Getting back Remove Soul. Sure. Attack with one self assembler. Ephemerate targeting Archaeomancer. They're in the loop now. Ephemerating the Archaeomancer again. Getting back Negate. They've got Negate and Remove Soul in hand. I can't resolve any spells anymore. Assembly Worker. It's in there. I'm going to play the Crab. They have way too much mana to even think about this being a useful piece of interaction. Three minutes is plenty of time for them to beat me. Just putting that out into the world. They'd have to start getting really sloppy. But I'm over-invested now. I could have conceded this and been done with this match probably 20 minutes ago. I guess I'll draw one more card, even though there's nothing that saves me here. Relic. Uh, all right, we're dead. Uh, played it down to the wire for no reason. Could have scooped that one a long time. Saved us all a lot of time. On to the next round. That matchup feels tough. Welcome to TopDeck.gg, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, playing for a huge prize, or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in-store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing Magic. I'm on the draw for round three. I am going to keep this hand. Once again, showcasing the... One of the cool things about Blue Tron is that you don't actually need Tron to play the game. At least not at first. We've got a black, re or black red artifact land. Faithless looting. Here we go. With the crazy art. This is the Rakdos burn deck. And they just missed their land drop. Interesting. I'm going to ice this land. Seems like a high value opportunity to do that. If they're over there missing land drops. And I'm also trying to dig. This expedition map. While taking your coin flip some of the time. Is cool. In spots like this where you really can. Take your time and get set up. I'm pretty into just drawing cards and seeing what Tron lands roll off before I spend my map. Ooh, okay. Opponent's going to a natural discard step. I'm going to Candy Trail. Draw the Brainstorm. Discarded Kitchen Imp. Busted! That was smart. Okay. Cool trick. Impulse. I'm going to start with Brainstorm. See if I can come up with a second Tron land. There it is. Don't need map anymore. And these Lorin reveals are going to be pretty good in a minute. But that map and brainstorm, play the mine. I'm going to leave up Mirror Shell Crab and then just tutor the missing Tron piece if I don't have to shell anything. Unfortunately, I don't get to know if I need to shell anything. Like if they go to the discard step and sneak a creature in in the end step like that again, uh, like if I pass priority and they just discard like some card. I don't get priority to tutor. A power plant. I'll just play a gigantic creature that hopefully can race them. And I'll do it this turn and I'll do it next turn. Flying haste. Clean up. Do you have a third one? Fiery temper. I mean, they can play this game in their cleanup step on one mana if they need to. Pretty cool. I think I actually want an impulse here. Is it signet condescend repeal? Repeal's not the worst thing I've ever seen. That wasn't a very good impulse. 
Okay, I'm going to cycle a Lorien Revealed here so I can play another Crab. The Repeal could save some damage. I'm dead in 4, 8, 12, 16, 4 hits. They're dead in 2. Arm, Alms of the Vein. This is a drain, isn't it? Oh, they gain 3 life. All right. Well, I'm now dead in 0 hits. <laughs> or 1 hit. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Self-Assembler. Assemble yourself. Hers is mine. Leaving up enough to repeal a kitchen imp here. Really wish I found the, the Bramblewood Elemental that I was looking for. Is that what that card's even called? The Bramble Homie that I was looking for on the, the Impulse. I even Candy Trailed this game. I've gained life. It's going to be this turn. They're either going to get it done in a flurry of rage or not. Lightning Bolt targeting me. That's probably good news. I should have repealed in response. Okay, good. That land coming into play tapped is probably the difference between winning and losing right now. One, two, three, four, repeal, an imp. I go to two and you go to dead. What a crazy game. This Rakdos deck is dope. I want my breath weapons. I want my Hydro Blasts. This deck's a little different than normal burn. Mirror Shell Crab, probably too slow here, although that was the entire game I just played. Relic doesn't actually do much. Like They do have the scrap work mutts and stuff. I don't think that's how I'm going to win or lose with a Relic of Progenitus, though. It doesn't stop Madness. Samael did prepare some notes for me and said that Haunted Fengraph is the last cut versus burn. So I'm going to trust their expertise here. Let's go. I have a zero lander. I'm going to mulligan that. This is risky. I have two Tron lands. I'm going to risk it for the biscuit, as they say. We get rid of fire ice. A blue source plays, a Tron land plays, a map plays, candy trails fine. Lorian revealed. I got a lot of live draws here. So I wouldn't fault anyone for mulling that. Easy game. A Hydro Blast. I could just take out this Epicure. I am actually going to do that. Even if this is unsexy, this Epicure is going to do 3, 4, 5 damage. And like I'm a long way away from stabilizing against that thing. Vampire's Kiss. Okay. Ooh, I was going to bounce a Blood Token, but this Simic Signet is the nuts. Okay, they are blooding away a Fiery Temper. Going off over there, hitting their land drops, living the dream. I'm also living the dream. Remember when I kept this hand and you were like, Brian, don't do that. That hand's bad. And I said, shut up. This is what I was talking about. And I'm going to bounce a blood token. Ooh, breath weapon. Dope. Being able to take out the blood token there might be a little aggressive, but being able to cycle a card while denying them an enabler for their deck and card selection is pretty cool. It would have been cool if they didn't have three blood tokens and I just knocked out their one, but I'll take that. I'm going to have enough mana to self-assembler and hold up breath weapon here. Galvanic Blast just doming me down to 10. And Deadly Dispute, sure. Goblin Tomb Raider, bummer. Just slightly behind dealing with this thing, but at least the self-assemblers are going to get some, some action. Need a power plant here. Three, four, five, self assembler. We got a big O. One, two, three, four. Can't play the other one anyway. Can't even be tempted to be wrong. I actually could have brainstormed there, though. That might have been sick. Faithless looting. I hope they play two kitchen imps off of this. Wow, just discarded two actual cards. Weird. That's not what your deck's supposed to do. Okay, I could brainstorm now. I could breath weapon now. I'm going to brainstorm now. No, impulse is better. I got a brainstorm to set up the impulse. Lorian re revealed for a reload. I'll take Lorian. Get rid of that self assembler. I'll have one of those soon anyway. All right, well, I didn't have a counter spell anyway, so I didn't actually tap out of anything. If they burn me out here, good job. I'm at one. It's going to be hard to win this game. A brainstorm. A condescend, I'm happy to see. If I put back, how much colored mana am I going to need? And I, I am going to shuffle here because I'm playing self-assembler. Yeah, I think I actually need the tower more than anything else. And get rid of the repeal. 
Self-assemble. Gotta attack. I'm not losing a game, or I'm not winning a game where I'm not reducing their life total. That's for sure. I can condescend for five, which is more than their current mana count. I can't beat two spells. I could beat any number of creatures. Here comes the looting. I'm not going to fight over that with one mana open. I'm just going to hope they hit a kitchen imp and I can get a sick little pyroclasm. I've just discarded two actual spells again. <laughs> oh shit. Well, got to interact with this. As embarrassing as that is. One life is not very much, it turns out. Condescend, X equals one. Get rid of this tributary. Do I want fire ice? I think I want nothing that isn't a counter spell. And I am going to breath weapon with the mana floating in three or five. Lorian revealed. Okay, not the counter spell I was looking for. I can interact with a creature though. A self assembler, at least put lethal on the board. Okay, one of us is dead. They've got one card in hand. I can beat a haste creature by tapping it or bouncing it. Oh, uh, not that one. Okay, you got me. And remember when I Hydro Blast that Valdaren Epicure on turn one? And that would have done at least three damage this game, and I was hanging on at one here on turn seven. This game would have been over a long time ago if I didn't do that. No regrets. Yeah, Boulder Branch Golem would have won that game. A counter spell would have won that game. Okay. Candy Trail probably would have won that game. I was drawing pretty heavy there. I will keep this selection of cards. Straight line to Tron. Mine, map, go. Tomb Raider. Already has haste. Busted. Hey, I'm going to take this turn off of mapping to save some life points. I could whale snake this, or I could repeal it. Another one of these jagoffs. Okay, that's in. I'll repeal one of them. Breath weapon. If I can access red mana somehow, that card's actually really good against their current configuration. I guess I could just map for a red source. This is a commitment to taking big beats, but I think knowing that it answers at least two cards that they have is a big deal. Ouch. Rakdos Carnarium. That's a bunch of beats. Expedition map. And I'm going to pass, see if they have more haste creatures they want to play. By passing, it opens up Deadly Dispute, but it also hurts them on if they have more creatures. All right, those are all in the graveyard. They didn't sack any of them to draw cards. I am at 10, though. A precarious life total versus five cards in their hand. Vampire's Kiss. Ouch. Fiery Temper. I'm <laughs> at five. Woof. Okay, uh, I'm going to map for a tower. All I can do here is hold up a bounce spell or condescend something if they tap out for it. Don't feel good about this. Faithless looting. Can't interact with that. Discarded two actual cards. I like when that happens. Missing Tron land, power plant, power plant, power plant. Lightning bolting me now. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four. Trying to send that. This does give me the scry before I draw for turn. All right, I'm at two. And it looks like I'm dead. Or no, they just blooded. Cool. Now this condescend is way too much. Oh, the boulder branch golem is here. Uh, not that I could cast it. I don't think I'm winning a game without that card is the problem. But I also am not winning a game with that card because I can't cast it. And I'm probably dead to anything, literally any card in their deck. Does that mean I have to brainstorm into this thing? Okay, I'm going to top the golem, top the brainstorm, draw for turn, hope their hand is blank, and then brainstorm into Tron next turn. That's the plan. I feel like three cards in their deck, on average, deal way more than two damage. Flashing back looting, and they do have the Alms of the Vein. I'm going to condescend it for zero and see if I can trick them. <laughs> Galvanic Blast over the top. All right, yep, cool. Yeah, that was a kicking. The Breath Weapon actually was really good off the splash, though it did slow down my Tron to have to get it, but opponent put me in that position by having three Goblin Guides in their Popper deck. That was tough. Next round's coming. The NYSE Open is a prestigious, long-running vintage tournament based out of New York City. 
It's returning again this summer, June 22nd, 2024, in Plainview, New York. This 15 proxy event has a $500 entry. That's a lot of money, but what are we playing for? First place gets a Black Lotus. Second through eighth place get Time Twister, Time Walk, and all five Moxin. At 115 players, a playset of Bizarre Baghdad is added to the prize pool. At 135, four Mistress Workshops. At 155, four Foil Gaia's Cradle. This prize pool is better than Eternal Weekend. If you think it's worth playing for, sign up for the event on Melee.gg or use the link in the video description, and I will definitely see you there. I'm on the play for round four. I'm going to keep this hand. It's got two Tron pieces and a blue source. I'm going to lead on a Tron piece here. I'm not going to brainstorm just randomly. And if I do happen to draw a tower or map, I would rather have Tron pieces in play. Oh, good. Another red deck. This one looks a little different, at least. And look at this. Sometimes you spike the tower. Plus two, plus oh, and Menace, as long as you've sacrificed a permanent. I think... But even though I did spike the tower, I'd still rather just bounce this thing and curve out. Because I can bounce this turn, counter something next turn. And if they commit Implement of Combustion here to get extra damage through, I bounce this thing, then they just like spent their whole turn dealing one to me. That's not exactly what happened, because they have a bunch of goblins in play now. But, I was still, I'm still happy with that outcome. They get to attack for three here. I could start assembling next turn. I can condescend or crab something this turn. Last runner. I'm gonna just gonna crab whatever here. Any piece of interaction I can get. Because I'm gonna untap and try to stabilize the board is good for me. Implement of combustion, Voldaren Epicure. Here is the squad. Power plant, self-assembler. Start putting big things in front of their things. And I'm still holding up Condescend rather than playing map. Another implement. And they are actually activating the implement this time. Dealing one to me. Condescend literally any card here. Make you pay two for that. Expedition map, not important. Brainstorm, I will keep. Er, island, I will keep. Chain lightning, okay. They'll probably just start deleting bodies into my damage here. Okay, brainstorm, shake it up. I don't need another mine, and I don't need this map. Repeal's actually sick. Three, four, five, another assembler, island. The repeal can bounce a goblin token. I'm not ready to counterattack just yet. I think I'll start attacking next turn. I'd like to go a turn without taking any damage before I start tapping my creatures. Uh, repeal. I could bounce the blood token here and only take two from this. They could sack the blood token in response, but... And then I don't get to draw a card, but either way, it's gone. And this saves me two life. I like that. Yeah, that's fine. Would have been sick if it was a cantrip, but also saving two damage, big deal. I'm at six. They got two cards in their hand. Seal of fire. Functionally at four. They could put me to three from an attack. Uh, yep. Dead to any lightning bolt. A repeal. Three, four, five. Assemble. Okay, I'm just going to attack for eight and pass the turn. I can repeal the goblin if I need an emergency redraw, but if they have lightning bolt, I'm basically just dead. Hold off the rebirth. Uh, okay. Please don't have bushwhacker as your last card. Cool. They don't have an attack here unless they have some additional tricks. End step, repeal one of the gobos. Trying to find velocity anywhere I can get it. If your last card's lightning bolt, I'm going to tap out on it. And you're going to get me, but I have to play the actual game in front of me rather than this theoretical game where they have something and I don't. Okay. They have to block one of these or they lose. Okay, I'm just going to attack with everything. Okay, they're at four. There's this tower. Last self-assembler. And there's no bluff here. I'm just going to play my creature. Gives me an extra blocker in case they have a haste idiot. Okay, don't draw a lightning bolt. Go. Experimental synthesizer. Flips. Goblin bushwhacker. Glad I have the extra blocker. And they played a land from hand. And they just flipped some random shit. And then died. Heck yeah. Okay. That was as tight as it gets. Breath weapon. Get in. Hydroblast. Get in. Crabs out, Fengraf out, 
This isn't exactly burn, but it is mono red. Gut shot's interesting. I could see an argument for it, but I don't really want to lose life to stop a 1-1 from hitting me. It would have to hit me twice in a game before that matters. Yeah, I think breath weapon is just my bread and butter here. Let's go. Okay, uh, I have Tron and access to red. I don't have any interaction, though. I do need the deck to deliver. I'm going to start with the red, because that's the one that is harder to unlock. Implement. Yep, they just have the full nut start again. Can't bounce the goblin this time. Okay, there is Candy Trail plus. I could Candy Trail or I could map. I'm going to Candy Trail. I could brainstorm. The, okay, what am I doing here? I could use Candy Trail. All right, I'm going to Candy Trail, see what's there. Repeal is there. Fire Ice is there. Those are both good. Fire Ice kills two things on this board. Repeal cantrips on its way through. Once again, my issue is blue sources. That's always going to be an issue when your opponent comes out this fast. I think I'm going to top top these. And I'm actually just going to tap out for Expedition Map. And if I die, I die. Goblin Tomb Raider, currently sleeping. Goblin Bushwhacker, no longer sleeping. Oh, we're dead. And Breath Weapon off the top isn't there, and I knew that. Okay. <laughs> oh, obliterated. Okay, uh, nothing in my sideboard would have stopped any of that from happening. I'm just going to go in, and maybe I have to mulligan better. Uh, the repeal's actually kind of good here, based on what their deck does. The one land double signet is not that good, though. Do I trust Brainstorm? I'm going to keep this, actually. Maybe it's crazy. I just need Brainstorm not to completely fail. Any land is, is good. Epicure. Okay, I get to repeal their blood token here. That's kind of sick. It's better than Brainstorming. Land. That counts. Uh, I am not going to risk Brainstorm missing a land here. I'm just going to get the red source and hope to play the game. Synthesizer. Flipped Galvanic Blast. We do have a land to cast it, but only for two. Thanks, Repeal. Knocking out that blood token was a big deal. Okay, deck. Keep the goods coming. That's not exactly the goods. I got a brainstorm here. Cool. Rewarded. Put back self assembler and brainstorm versus mine. I think I have to signet this turn and then think about what's going on in subsequent turns with the fire ice and stuff. But I, I do need to have mana to play the game, and I'm about to miss a land drop. Tomb Raider. Another Tomb Raider. This is a bunch of damage. Uh, my kingdom for breath weapon. I can fire one thing, ice, or fire one thing, repeal another thing. Brainstorm does get all new looks here. I'm going to risk it for a brainstorm. Okay, cool. Versus tower is very good. Do I have time for this other signet, or do I just have to cycle Lorien revealed? I think I have to cycle Lorien. And I'm just going to pass the turn here. Synthesizer. Bad hit, bad hit, bad hit. We need a bad one. Great Furnace. Okay, medium hit. Okay, they're attacking with everything here. I'm going to kill a 2-2. Two -two, fire one of these. And I'm going to bounce the other one. Yeah, this does redraw one of the bad cards off Brainstorm. Unfortunately, there's no way around that. And my top card is Self Assembler. Do I want a 5 5 in play right now? And I can do worse than that. Okay, I'm going to draw the Self Assembler. I'm going to cycle the Lorien. And then I'll put, or 4 4, not 5 5. I'll put a 4 4 into play. Bigger than their things is the important thing. Now we'll see how much reach or go wide they have accessible here. That's really good. That probably means they have two of them if they let on it like that. Lightning Bolt. Or I'm just dead. Yeah, okay. All right, they had me for Xaxes. Wowie! Yeah, I mean, Splashing Red. Breath Weapon would have been great any one of these games. Unfortunately, what you have to do to get access to the red is pretty slow. And you don't really have other ways to slow them down. Well, like, you can slow them down. We saw me repeal and fire 
multiple things there, and it was just kind of like, yeah, right, you're dead anyway. Figuring out this match is going to be pretty important to the long-term success of this deck. The official Bosch and Roll Island Ponder Keep shirt is available exclusively through Coalesce Apparel. This Magic Player owned business is a staple of our community. They keep this channel on the air, and it's my pleasure to partner with them for this product. Coalesce is the best magic apparel on the market. They have awesome new designs coming out all the time. Use code Bosch and Roll to get 10% off your order only at coalesceapparel.shop. I'm on the plate for the final round, seeking redemption here. This is a hand that is just reasonable enough to keep. I have said a lot in this league about how you can play without Tron cards, or at least you can keep hands without Tron cards, but I've also been just clowned by a bunch of aggressive decks. So maybe that's not true in all matchups. Just trying to self reflect and adjust on my performance here. Wedding invitation. All right, we've got some. Boros up against us here. All right, I could brainstorm, try to hit a land and play expedition map with it, or I could just map for the land. Yeah, this sucks really bad if I miss. I'm just going to grab tower and start. Start somewhere. Boros Synthesizer, though, is the type of deck that we could just completely outmuscle, go way over the top of. If they're going to be hitting core sky fishers off of their synthesizers on turn three, though, woof. All right, deck. Give me the goods. Drawn land. I'd even take another tower, but I'd prefer one of the other Tron lands here. Just naturally. Right into my hand. Okay, fine. Not a Tron land, but it does get the assembler assembling. Hit my land drop, add to the board. Let's go. Ooh, makeshift munitions in the main deck. That's spooky. I played Boros Synth on the channel last week, two weeks ago. I don't know when this is going to release, but... I played it recently, and it was really good. All right, Galvanic Blast to kill myself, Assembler. Condescend. All right, I'm going to Brainstorm, try to hit the land here. The land also shuffles Brainstorm because it casts Self-Assembler. This is, like, really good if it works. And really bad if it doesn't. Got there. Okay, I don't think Fire Ice is doing much for me here. And I do like the Golem. Mirror Shell Crab just being huge is going to be relevant eventually. Lorien Revealed is my next land, or I could just cast Lorien Revealed. I actually think Crab is the worst card in this hand. Assemble. Okay, just working my way through stuff. I already absorbed a Galvanic Blast. Glint Hawk gets to pick up Synth, and they get to go off here. Flipped in all that glitters. Great, we're dead. Yeah, this innovation, uh, this is relatively new in the scheme of Popper. Like, the card existing is relatively new, but also adding it to Boros, so they just have this insane gear they can hit, is uh, pretty serious. And now that changes everything that I thought was going on. Okay, I found a bounce spell. That's good news. That is exactly what I needed to be doing here to continue playing the game. Hey, I think I want to brainstorm first. I'd love to hit Tron right now. <laughs> Easy game. Okay. What am I doing this turn? I have seven mana for the Golem, and then I can bounce the Skyfisher. That's what I'm doing this turn. All right. Put back Condescend and Self Assembler. Those aren't happening this turn. Golem. Gain a bunch of life. I'm going to repeal now before they get any ideas. They bounce that thing. Attack for four. Yeah, that was a big hit, but my deck plays removal, so I have a chance. Hope they don't have another one of those right away. Synth, Lip Seeker of the Way. Okay, this list is pretty different than the one I played the other day. Lint Hawk, picked up the Synth, flipped Ancient Den. They do have a land drop still. Okay, the Seeker of the Way, the lifelink, is pretty real. Galv Blast. Killing a self-assembler rather than going face. I appreciate that. I feel like this should have reach. Every time I look at it or think about it, it's green-coded. Big green things have reach these days. Come on, give it to me. It kind of send pretty bad here, actually. I could just lure in revealed. See what shakes out. I could continue assembling myself. I could play a big crab. I think I want to reveal Lorien. I'm going to leave red in the pool to do that. In case I draw Fire Ice 
and can kill the Seeker. That did not happen. I did draw the last self-assembler, obviously. Uh, but I played Brainstorm, so solved it. Brainstorm. Ooh, another Golem. Put back Assembler and Map. I don't need those cards. And I could play Golem here. I could also Assemble. I think I'd rather Golem. Because I'm not doing anything with the other mana. All right, big Golem. That does mean I have to draw Expedition Map. And I think I'm leaving the squad back to gang block Seeker of the way if it comes in. I'm worried about a giant lifelink hit from that thing. Begin the synthesizing. Flip to Galve Blast. These are six fives. Blasting one of them. Okay. They can makeshift munitions to finish that off. At least. Yep. Sacking the synth to munitions. Flip to Great Furnace. That synthesizer's gone. It was good for like eight cards already, but it is gone. Barbed Butterfist. The Seeker does trade with Golem now. All right. Hope you don't have two spells here to win the combat. I will take a trade, though. Yeah, that's fine. And Core Skyfisher, probably going to pick up the Fist. Yep. Okie dokie. I think I'm going to map just for another tower here. This is mana neutral. Just cycling that out of the way. Three, four, five. Assembler, get the last one. Three, four, five. The final assembler has assembled. And I have some soft interaction up. They have way more resources than me at this time, and they are pushing real damage. Barbed Fist. I cannot counter this or even come close in any sort of meaningful way. Yeah, even after gaining 12 life, I'm still just losing this game by a lot. Okay, they picked up Wedding Invitation. Okay, I can at least get a counter here. X is 2. That's enough. Mirror Shell Crab Urza's mine. These cards are not helping. I need a Breath Weapon, which is, unfortunately, in my sideboard. What would it take to get a Reach Creature in this deck? Just something to deal with Flyers. That's how... Or, it's not how I keep losing. I keep losing in a variety of ways, but that is part of how I keep losing. All right, Haunted Fengraf, which costs three, not two. Can we be get back a golem? Hell yeah. Golem. We're in there. Three, four, five, six, seven. I guess I just cast a crab. I'm going to get in with one of these four fours. I guess they both should have attacked. Because the ground is already locked up with the creatures that I do have. Yeah, both the assemblers should have attacked here. The only profitable double block that they have removes a flyer from play, which I'm pretty cool with. Okay, if they want to block sack, that's fine. All right, cool. Yeah, sacking a land. Yeah, they do just have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, they just have 11 points of burn city in play from the makeshift munitions. Yeah, I can't win this game. Yeah, munitions is another one of those cards, like all the glitters, that I feel like probably should not have been downshifted to common. And now they burn me out. Not that the pauper format can't handle a shakeup once in a while, but. At the same time, I do feel like stuff like uh, makeshift munitions, that's just not a common. That effect is not common. It's the common, uncommon, rare, in addition to how often they show up in packs, that's also a complexity indicator. And that card is uh, extremely complicated. If you want to support red, black, sack in a limited environment, there's probably a cleaner way to do it than that. Okay, breath weapon. Hydro Blast, Ulamog's Crusher are cards I want here. Fire Ice can come out. The Golem really didn't do anything. I mean, gaining the life mattered. Maybe it's Crab, though. Like, the Crab just dies off so quick and is irrelevant in combat. At least the gaining life could flip something for me. I can see an argument for Exclude in this matchup also. I do like the, the bounce off of the Whale Snake a lot. I like the life gain and selection off Candy Trail. I'm going to do it like this. Okay, do I trust Candy Trail? I actually have the Breath Weapon. I am going to keep this. I've got Candy Trail. Two looks here. Any land keeps the party going. Come on, Trail. Don't fail me. Uh-oh, Candy Fail. Bottom, bottom. And hope for the best. Lots of lands in the deck. Lauren Revealed's fine. The Raven Inspector. 
or in Revealed's fine. Like I said, got there. Oh, that should have been the tributary. I should. I I was just thinking about playing map so hard that it. I forgot that I this breath rub weapon is actually really important and good. Another inspector. I mean, the map can get the red source. I'm not completely out on a limb here. Repeal. Okay. I think I'm just going to map for the red source here. Get the trib, play that. I can repeal both of these clue tokens next turn. The seeker of the way. Uh, and they had the land. They never miss. A big part of playing the Boros deck is understanding how to not miss. Okay, I can repeal a clue for a redraw. Hit a land, that's sick. Okay, I can repeal another clue. Or I could Breath Weapon right now. If I repeal a clue, I would basically be committing myself to Whale Snaking the Seeker of the Way. All right, I am going to repeal the clue. Okay, I'm going to let them get some triggers here. I might be walking into Pyroblast. But if they overcommit here, I like my odds. They flipped a Glint Hawk off of the thing. That's going to be really good. They're not going to be able to play whatever card they get out of the synth here, though. So they might just Glint Hawk picking up Ancient Den. The Batter Fist. Okay. okay. The Fist is in. And do I want to take five? Or do I want to take two? I can Candy Trail here. I can gain this life back. And I think sweeping up the Seeker is going to be really good. I don't really want to bounce the Core Sky Fisher. All right. Yeah, I'm going to eat the candy. Found a land. That means I get a free shot at this impulse. Or it could mean... All right, I'm just going to Breath Weapon now. I'm not going to get fancy here. Got that stuff up. I can leave up the Bounce Spell or I can Impulse. The Synth is back. Flipped a Great Furnace. I fisted up the Sky Fisher. I think I take three because Bouncing Sky Fisher just unlocks their engine. And I'd rather Impulse hit my land drop and try to... Play through this another way. Hydro Blast versus Power Plant. I'm taking the Power Plant. Candy Trail. I like that. I'm going to self-assemble first, and then I'm going to play Candy Trail. Because there's no reason to scry if you're about to shuffle your deck. Show me the tower. Two islands. I'll keep one of the islands. That lets me self-assemble and hold up a bounce spell next turn. They sacked the synthesizer that's good news they don't do that if they have anything else going on now i'll feel less bad about bouncing score core sky fisher and there's the batter fist from exile that they hit off of the synth okay land assembler and i think playing around all that glitters versus playing around pyroblast i want to make sure i don't get glittered and if they're going to pile up on the flyer this just gives me extra action on the bounce. If they have Pyroblast, that stinks. But also, this exchange is really good if I can get it. Raven Inspector. Sky Fisher. Picking up the Inspector. All right, they're banking clues rather than adding to the board. They've seen Breath Weapon now. Ooh, that's good. Map. Find the tower. Play the tower. I can attack with one of these. Gotta win somehow. They want to double block. I'm fine with that. Oh, change their mind. Yeah, they realize that they're at 24 and I'm at 9. Oh, they realized again. Nope. <laughs> they don't know what's going on here. Okay. I would have been pretty happy with that trade. All right. Big boulder buddy. Let's get that extra life in the mix. Little buffer. Make sure I don't get cheesed out. The candy trail is another little buffer. I'm still representing bounce spells, so they have to be careful with all their glitters. 3 2. But putting Batter Fist on that is nice damage in combat, but it does expose that creature to Breath Weapon, where it's the creature in their deck that normally survives it. Inspector. Yeah, there you go. You gotta move that around. End step. Eat the candy trail. Hey! The second Breath Weapon has arrived. Hey, I'm going to tower, map for tower, play the tower. Boulder Branch Golem kills their whole squad. If they triple block, there's no double block here because it's a 6-5. 
It's taking the six. I love it. We got one, two, three, four, five, another assembler. And I'm not going to play that. Hold up the breath weapon and the condescend. Sacking a clue in the end step. If they try to do the combat batter fist thing, breath weapon is an instant. Synth, that was a good draw. Destroy evil, also a good draw. And destroy evil is like fine, I guess. It's not that good. They destroyed my evil. Oh, move the fist. Move the fist. Okay, they've learned. Play some more 2 twos. All right, that counts. End step. I think I'm going to breath weapon and just try to race from here. Just light it up. Put you to three. Attack with everyone. Condescend that. Condescend is not getting better this game. Older Branch, Golem, Warrior, and Revealed. Top, top. Top, top those. Attack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whale Snake. And I will go all in here. Decline the search because I don't want to shuffle my deck. There are three facing down, five lethal threats. I'm at 13. Fingers crossed. Flint Hawk. I guess all the glitters just kills me. That card's really good. Makeshift Munitions. That one is also really good. Does that kill me? Come on! Okay, ban this card. I'm over it. <laughs> Jesus, they just flipped the two ways to kill me. Uh... All right. Alex, I know you're watching this. I've had enough. I thought all the glitters was like fun and interesting when I was playing Boros, but as the deck on the other side where like, OK, uh, my Boros opponent has two cards in their hand. I'm at 13 and they're dead on board. How could I lose? Bah, bah, bah. I feel like Popper decks shouldn't have a card that flips a deck that flips a game this hard. I used to describe Popper as legacy without the bullshit. And some people call it like legacy light or whatever. I don't think that actually helps the format and or is a good description, but legacy without the bullshit. And by that, I mean, you have the depth of card pool, the depth of decision making, but you don't get cheesed by garbage like show and tell or chalice of the void or blood moon or tendrils of agony. But all that glitters kind of feels like that. We were having a fun back and forth exchange here, and I'm not like mad. Like, I don't care. Like, I lose games all the time. but. Doing all that work, getting to that point where it's like, okay, we've carefully managed all their stuff, walked them into the breath weapon, and blah, 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 blah. I'm at 13. How could I lose? Splat from one card. GG. All right. Off it. Okay. Much rougher run this time around. My last run was pretty successful. We played against a lot of aggressive decks where the red splash was essential, but also didn't come up in time. I could also blame my mulligan decisions on that. Maybe with more reps on the deck, I would know that I have to actually maul to the red source or the breath weapon or whatever, rather than trust the deck to hold up or at least maul to a hydroblast to buy some time. I wish this deck could deal with a flyer. And I don't mean witness protection. Like witness protection, I'm not bringing that in for Cork Skyfisher. But just like one big artifact creature with reach feels like it would flip a lot of matchups. I just did a quick scryfall search of artifacts that are legal and popper that have the word reach on them. Tower worker on theme, but terrible. And Rusk Goliath 10 is a lot, but 10 10 reach trample. And you get to 10. Having 10 mana was not my problem in the games that I lost to flying creatures. It was the fact that I had nothing to say about flying creatures. Wall of Tangle Court, actually ancient popper tech. This used to come in against fairies from various green decks, and it was actually really annoying. I don't think that's what we want, though. Brimstone Trebuchet has secret reach. Consulate Skygate, just 04 reach. I don't think that's really what we want. Cogwork Archivist, 4 5 reach for 6. Put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. Kind of some passive graveyard hate, or being able to loop your deck if things get super grindy. It's funny that it has reach because it has to be tall to get the books off the top shelf. <laughs> That's actually really funny. Okay, just floated some ideas out there. If this deck becomes red enough to play stuff like Scred or Lightning Bolt, then the deck is just a different identity, and I'm not proposing that. But just something to deal with a deck whose plan is to put two or three, one or two power flyers into play, because we do seem pretty soft to that. And I think reasonable method or reasonable measures have been taken against the hyper fast red attacking decks just need to make good mulligan decisions if you really want to 
add like four breath weapons to the sideboard instead of two, you can do that. Just floating that out there. Those are my thoughts. Samael, thank you for sharing the deck with us. I do enjoy these play patterns, even if we didn't do a lot of winning today. This is a fun nut to crack. Everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon. I'll see you next time.